more on all this, let's bring in CTV medical correspondent Avis Favreau. It's always heartbreaking when people are lost before their time. When we talk about suicide, though, and now this is the second celebrity inside of a week, people are quite shocked. Actually, it's the third. There was third. another one. There was another one, the younger sister of the Queen of the Netherlands, who was found dead, age 33, in Buenos Aires. And it's quite a shock. I mean, when I heard about Anthony Bourdain this morning on my walk, I had to stop and digest because like everyone else, you're thinking successful, famous, probably well off, and yet choosing to end their life. And it brings the whole issue of mental health and mental illness bang to the fore. And with Kate Spade, everybody said kind of before we knew, obviously how tragic and, you know, I wonder what kind of mental health issues she may have been suffering from. And then we learned from her sister that this maybe wasn't expected. So clearly she had been suffering for a while. Um, we're just learning about Anthony Bourdain, of course, but it's still a very hidden disease, this mental health <laughs> issue. Absolutely. And I mean, we're doing a lot better, Beverly, in terms of talking about mental health. But the fact is that there's a stigma. I mean, we know from Kate Spade that she didn't really want to make it known that she needed help or went to get help because it damages the brand. Because you know what? No matter what, people sort of still think there's something wrong with having a mental illness instead of seeing it as a problem like heart disease, like diabetes. So we've got a long way to go. We do not know everything about Anthony Bourdain's story, mm -hmm. nor the one, the, the sister of the Queen of the Netherlands. But, you know, it does point to the fact that, you know, mental illness doesn't look a certain way. It doesn't behave a certain way. And that we have to go a lot further. These people obviously would have had the resources and the connections to get help. Um, and, you know, the question is, why didn't they? But then there's so many Canadians that would love to get help and can't get help because they don't have access to psychologists, psychiatrists, long waits for, for things. So this is, you know, in one way, I'm glad this is coming out because it's such a big problem. And there's so many people suffering. I mean, even on my own street, there are people dealing with it and there aren't the resources or there isn't a way or people sort of talk about it or they have a problem. Mm. Whereas we need to bring this out like this is a physical illness because it is, it's the brain, it's and physical. And it's across the ages. Absolutely. Although I do need to point out, I looked at the Canadian mm -hmm. statistics and the highest rates of suicides are actually adults in midlife, kind of the Anthony Bourdain, Kate Spade area. 40% of all suicides in Canada are between 40 and 59, 60. They sort of drop off. It's midlife. And I mean, so it's, it's, it's not just the young, although it's the second leading cause of death among young people. This is a problem in midlife. All ages, men more likely, the unmarried more likely. Mm. Um, if you're married, that seems to be protective against it, maybe because someone's watching you. But I mean, I hope that at the end of this week, we don't just say, oh, these celebrities and yeah. shuff shuffle it off, that really we start saying, what's going on and how do we make it better? Not just for people who are famous and rich, although they bring it to the fore, but for everybody. Interesting, too, that when you look across the broadcasts that have been happening, um, certainly, obviously, CNN, uh, because that's where the show was, but they're using it as an opportunity, bringing up phone, uh, phone numbers that people can use to get help. So it's not just the celebrity mourning. They're saying, this is how. And that's across the board, broadcast-wise, get help. Absolutely, and that's wonderful. But after the phone call, Bev, then what? Mm. You need to get the doctors, you need to get the medication, you need to get the help, you need to get the counseling. It's the back end of it too. So recognition, we're working on it. It's the delivery of the services and making it not shameful to get help, but something that people do automatically. Because, you know, depression is a terminal illness. If yeah. it's not treated, this is what happens. Good to have this conversation with you, Ace Thank Favreau. You. Thank you. And as we head to break, we want to show you the number for the Canada Suicide Prevention Service, that phone number, 1-833-456-4566. You can also visit the website at crisisservicescanada.ca.